In the centre of London today, close to Hyde Park is a tiny monument and memorial to a structure that once stood that terrified all of those across the English capital. Found next to Speaker's Corner, a place which is famous for speaking freely against the government or against issues, is a plaque on the floor that marks the site of the Tyburn Tree. The Tyburn Tree was a hanging tree, established as a site of execution, possibly almost a thousand years ago. It was just one of many execution sites found across London, which included the public beheading site on Tower Hill, and also the public burning site at Smithfield. However, what occurred at the Tyburn Tree was incredibly sadistic, brutal and would be enough to make the bravest turn away. So join us today as we look at the tree that executed thousands, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. The first recorded execution that took place at the Tyburn Gallows was in 1196. A populist leader named William Fitzosbert was taken to the gallows for his role in a revolt which took place in London. He was an advocate of the poor and once the revolt was put down he was sentenced to death. He was dragged through the streets of London behind a horse to Tyburn where he was hanged in front of a large crowd. Executions at Tyburn have been speculated to have even occurred at the beginning of the 12th century and it's a site mostly associated with the dreaded hanging, drawing and quartering. The gallows at Tyburn itself, known as a tree, was rather different and infamous. It was a triangular based structure instead of simply just a beam that people would be executed on. The triangular structure meant that more executions could take place at once, often with many being hanged at the same time. It was also known as a triple tree and had a horizontal wooden structure with three legs, almost like a three-legged stool. This was created during the Tudor period, but before a more traditional gallows was there. The idea of mass executions on the Tyburn tree was common. For example, in June 1649, 24 prisoners, including a woman, were all taken to the gallows in eight carts, and at the same time two dozen people were executed on the gallows, which would have been a horrible sight to have seen. It was a public show for the Londoners to see mass executions, and the idea was to deter the public from committing crimes, so spectators would flock to the area in their thousands to view the proceedings. The hanging, drawing and quartering which occurred at Tyburn was possibly the most gruesome of the execution methods deployed during the medieval and Tudor period. It was a standard sentence for those men accused of treason against the monarchy, but women were spared the quartering process, instead being hanged on the gallows. The condemned would be dragged or drawn through the streets of London in front of baying crowds, in which they would be dragged behind horses, the cobbles on the street smashing into the back of their heads. This would be incredibly painful, and often the condemned would arrive at Tyburn suffering injuries. It was all done to shame the person, and to show people that their crimes will not be tolerated. Following this they were taken to the Tyburn tree, where ropes would be attached to the triangular gallows. They would then be hanged from the tree, with the executioner attaching a rope round the condemned person's neck, they would be struggling and gasping for air, but shortly before death, they were cut down. Then the worst part came. Close to death, the genitals would be cut off, and then they would be disemboweled, with their entrails being pulled out after a cut was made into the stomach, while still alive. They would then be beheaded, and the body cut up into different pieces, with these then being sent to different parts of England, at the behest of either the king or the person in charge. These remains were then displayed, the public show was horrifying, and often after executions some remains were buried nearby, or later on they were used by anatomists for public dissections. After death, sometimes the crowd would fight with surgeons over the remains, in case that the medical study would interfere with judgement after death. In the 1400s, Tyburn became a place associated with criminal executions, after Smithfield became a site mostly used for heretic burnings. Prisoners were often taken from Newgate Prison, through St Giles in the fields, and then down Oxford Street as it is today, to arrive at their place of execution. The journey was around three miles and could last three hours, and the condemned were sometimes allowed a final drink at the Bowl Inn, being allowed a glass of wine or a glass of liquor. During the reign of Henry VIII, a large amount of people were executed for treason, and much of these death sentences were carried out at the Tyburn Tree. Those in charge of the Pilgrimage of Grace, a protest that emerged in the north of England against Henry VIII's changes to religion, and in particular the dissolutions of the monastery, were put to death at Tyburn in a clear message not to cross the infamous Tudor monarch. 
It's believed that the Triple Tree was created during the Tudor period, especially during the 1570s, as the amount of those executed went up massively, and the need to kill people on a mass scale occurred. In particular during the 1570s, it was said that 704 criminals were sentenced to death and hanged at Tyburn for crimes that were incredibly serious such as treason or murder, and even crimes less serious such as stealing cattle. One of the strangest executions to occur at the Tyburn Tree was the posthumous executions of those involved in the death of Charles I. When the monarchy was restored, Charles II ordered the regicides, a series of criminal investigations and sentences placed onto those men who executed his father. At Tyburn, the former protector of the Commonwealth, Oliver Cromwell, along with John Bradshaw and Henry Ireton were brought to the gallows. However, the catch was they had already been dead a number of years, so the decaying corpses of Cromwell, Bradshaw and Ireton were hanged, drawn and quartered in front of a huge crowd, a sight which would have been incredibly disturbing. The execution site continued to be used until the last execution was carried out in around the end of 1783. The executions were huge spectacles, and at one point the stand collapsed, such was the size of the crowd witnessing the proceedings, and dozens were injured and killed when the stand collapsed. The wealthy even paid to sit in the stands to watch the executions, to have a view that was not obstructed by anything. Those who owned houses nearby sometimes even rented out window spaces for people who wanted to watch. Executions continued in the 1700s, and there was a long line of famous executions that took place there. Perking Warbeck the Great Pretender, who tried to contest the throne of Henry VII by portraying himself as one of the princes in the tower, was executed there. As was Elizabeth Barton, the nun of Kent, who predicted the death of Henry VIII if he married Anne Boleyn. Leaders of rebellion and those who opposed Henry VIII's changes to religion and society often found themselves at Tyburn, and even the men accused of adultery with his fifth wife Catherine Howard were executed there. Catholic priests were executed also for refusing to abide by religious rules and laws at the time, being victims of the Reformation. Many other criminals and highwaymen were executed at Tyburn, with highwayman Jack Shepard's execution attracting a crowd of over 200,000. The Tyburn tree was greatly feared, and was a site of execution that for centuries had much bloodshed. It was an area where much excitement for the crowd occurred, but much suffering also happened for the condemned. The style of execution that took place there was intensely brutal and savage, and today very little survives in the area that recounts the stories of those being brought to be killed there. Every day Londoners walk past the area, unaware of the tales of the past, and the suffering that took place on the Tyburn Tree. Once again thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.